you know, there is opportunity to actually create a different uh, system economically and financially. There is opportunity to give more uh, power back to people mm -hmm. in terms of making uh, and, and choosing how things are done. Um, and those are all, I believe, valuable trends. After we have lived 10 years in, uh, you know, in, in a big tech dominated world, uh, Google, Facebook, etc., Google Meta, etc., right? Uh, this is a positive change that uh, should be embraced. Great meeting you. Thank you for taking time to come and speak to us. Thank you for inviting me. Very, uh, yeah, absolutely. So let's just get started. Tell us a little bit about who you are and tell us what you do. So I'm currently the chairman of Latvian Blockchain Association, uh, but my background is more in traditional startups. Mm -hmm. So I spent some time in the United States, Seattle, uh, working for Techstars, and that's accelerator company. Uh, afterwards, I was CEO of one, one Latvian startup uh, called Anatomy Next. Mm -hmm. So we built a 3D human virtual and augmented reality uh, for medical education. Uh, afterwards, I, I did found an NGO which was dealing more with the global uh, Latvian remigration problem. So there's a lot of people who have left Latvia. And so we are trying to spend, uh, spread the good word about Latvia. There's actually a good opportunities for young people. And, um, and somehow I, I actually ended up in politics and spent my last four years as member of the parliament. Okay. And uh, yeah, and then just uh, like eight months ago, I decided not to run for the next time mm -hmm. and get back into startup ecosystem where I felt like uh, I'm uh, more, uh, I guess, accustomed to and that I'm uh, more, more interested in, at least this, at this moment in my life. Uh, so, uh, and the blockchain ecosystem in Latvia is one of the most uh, interesting and most exciting, uh, I would say, things that are going on in Latvia and uh, general startup ecosystem. So, super excited to be uh, together with the, with the startups, help Latvia become an interesting place for blockchain and, and crypto and Web3 companies mm -hmm. and uh, work also with the general society and state uh, institutions to actually make this happen. You are right, that is a fascinating story. So you went from NGO to uh, uh, parliament and now in blockchain. From startups to startups NGO to uh, yeah to establishing one other company by myself, then into parliament and now to blockchain. Yeah. Okay, that's a, that's <laughs> fascinating, fascinating stuff. All right, well let's uh, let's let's zero in on on on, the, on blockchain. Sure. Um, help me understand a little bit about why is it blockchain uh, an, an important area of development for Latvia. Yeah, I believe the blockchain, blockchain is really one of the key uh, technologies that is currently developing worldwide, uh, first of all. So, and I'm looking at this uh, broader. So there's blockchain, it's Web3 uh, in general. So third generation of internet technology as such, you know. And uh, of course, there are several underlining dimensions of that. There's, of course, cryptocurrencies, uh, there's NFTs, uh, there are smart contracts. Uh, there are uh, Web3 gaming uh, and, and so on. So each of those aspects actually correlates to the core blockchain technology. And uh, there's a lot of exciting things going on. Mm -hmm. And I would say in the last uh, five years, uh, Latvian blockchain startups have done a huge leap forward. Uh, they, they have come from being very small community into actually growing some very successful companies mm -hmm. here in Latvia operating worldwide and I'm quite sure there's much more to come. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about, about blockchain the technology itself. Uh, I guess maybe the, the first question I have is we've developed quite a number of a wide range of services based on client infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. Why do we need blockchain? You know, uh, the, the core thesis here is, of course, that this really recreates the world we have created, uh, commercially especially. It gi gives more power back to people, uh, which is exciting. Uh, so it's sort of 
democratization process of the current uh, economic uh, system that we have. Mm -hmm. You give, give more voting rights in different financial aspects as well uh, to the community actually. You limit uh, some of the uh, intermediaries which are taking unnecessary cuts potentially for you. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, I was just, as I told you, I went to Denmark. Uh, so each time I paid with my card, I got the notification from the bank. So they, they, they are taking 3% of uh, any purchase I make mm -hmm. for value uh, uh, for, for the conversion of the currency. Mm -hmm. Although both of our countries are in the EU, right? So, and 3% is not, uh, not a little amount. If you buy a lot of things, I mean, it's, uh, it's money. So, you know, there's opportunity to actually create a different uh, system economically and financially. There is opportunity to give more uh, power back to people mm -hmm. in terms of making uh, and, and choosing how things are done. Uh, and those are all, I believe, valuable trends. After we have lived 10 years in, uh, you know, in, in a big tech dominated world, uh, Google, Facebook, etc., Google Meta, etc., right? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a positive change that uh, should be embraced. Okay, and that brings me to my next question because I understand that blockchain is built on these alternative principles that really change the, the, the notion of things. You know, we have the democratization process, the transparency, the, uh, the anonymity as well that perhaps some of the blockchain brings to, to, to individuals, which in my view stands at odds with the way in which the, the current financial system works, specifically when we talk about finance. Mm -hmm. um, what's your view as, well as we as blockchain becomes more and more prevalent? Um, how, how will this disparity between the traditional system and the blockchain system will sort itself out? Um, my belief is that they'll coin this. Mm -hmm. There are cases where traditional financial system makes sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there are many cases where it does not make sense, where they earn huge profits, but it's definitely not uh, beneficial for the society, uh, for the health of the uh, economic system sometimes, with huge inflations we, uh, in, uh, yeah, in inflation we currently, for, for example, have, and then many countries in the world has permanently, like, huge 30 40 percent inflation you know so this could help uh to deal with that mm -hmm. so i'm looking at different examples and saying let's say when i travel regularly and i do let's let's say i go to denmark again uh, and i spend my money if i use cryptocurrencies i don't pay those huge commissions every time i just swipe my card you know mm -hmm. then there's for Latvia, there's about 25% people who have left Latvia to work in other uh, European countries. Mm -hmm. So they earn money every month and send part of that money back to their families. And each time they do that, often there is a big commission. Mm -hmm. Is that a democratic way? How, how to do that? Is that helping that society that brought them on? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. So there are many use cases like this in financial system that, uh, that really makes sense. However, uh, it will coexist, I believe, uh, the blockchain, like cryptocurrency or, or blockchain enabled uh, financial system will coexist together with the traditional banking system and some of the financial instruments, perhaps those who, which some governments have in order to regulate some things are sometimes needed. Mm -hmm. And of course, taxes need to be collected in order to pay uh, teachers, uh, you know, uh, firefighters, policemen, and also repair the roads. We need to collect taxes. So, you know, there's a part to play for, for that. So, uh, yeah. Right, okay. And um, now what, what I'd like to understand a little bit more is, from the perspective of Latvia, it, I think it, 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 it takes a certain mindset to see something like blockchain and say, let's go and investigate this. We saw a lot of, a lot of countries that, especially because blockchain was very, very closely tied to Bitcoin at the very beginning, and they were like, we, we don't want to get even close to that. But what's different about Latvia that, that caused the country to say, we should, we should look into that? Well, I believe that uh, there's push from the industry. So we have grown in those. There are Latvian founded companies who are doing actually very well in this area. Mm -hmm. Even though there is a market downturn, they're still going strong because they have been able to create products uh, that really serves the whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. 
not release a different coin or something like this, or do something very speculative, but create sustainable products that basically is the base for the whole ecosystem to, to live in. And as long, there's, as long as there's an ecosystem, those companies will do well. So there is a push from this sector and they're saying, hey, we are creating value here. We are, we are uh, making Latvian economy stronger. Mm -hmm. Please do something about this and, and, and uh, there needs to be some uh, regulation changes that uh, really enables these companies to grow, uh, to uh, grow new startups in, in these areas and actually to be compliant. And both uh, sides, I believe, currently are ready to actually come together and find the common ground on which uh, the companies can uh, develop and also the state could regulate some of those aspects like AML and so on on the basic level uh, that is needed, obviously. Mm -hmm. and, and when we started talking just a few minutes ago, you mentioned a number of blockchain associated applications. You talked about NFTs, you talked about Web3, you talked about um, crypto. Um, I think many of these uh, terms are perhaps still quite new for, for the traditional financial system. Um, what's your view in terms of how they will, they will increasingly get more and more introduced into, into traditional finance? Yeah, well, the big push also on EU level is the uh, MECA regulation, mm -hmm. uh, which is now adopted by European Commission and European Parliament in the first hearing. The second and final hearing should be I believe in April or, or somewhere along those uh, along along that timeline, mm -hmm. and uh, basically that regulation says that in all EU states you have to be able to uh, become a licensed financial institution, even if you are cryptocurrency related. So uh, there's no longer uh, I don't know we call it. Uh, uh, a tactic where you put your hand in the uh, head in the sand and then and, and, and pretend you don't see anything, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's not long, no longer possible. So even those financial institutions like traditional banks, which are sometimes even reluctant to even look at these uh, new innovations, you know, or uh, seeing huge risks and and, and and not seeing any interest in actually innovate in that uh, that direction so i mean now when the uh, regulation will be uh, placed in the whole eu there just uh, will not be any more excuses to actually see the potential of this financial system innovation the potential that could bring also to actually to the banks but uh, they try to mostly mostly from my experience i see that they try to prevent this uh, innovations from happening and uh, yeah, the regulators in EU have understood that uh, this is the new development in the world and we should not put the hand in the sand and believe that we don't see anything. Right, and, and do you think this uh, MICA will have, uh, will impose certain challenges in organizations that are working in this space? Uh, for some definitely, more uh, DeFi, mm -hmm. uh, there should be I believe uh, I've talked with some DeFi uh, companies as well and they, they say basically there should be more sandboxes like legal sandboxes and things like that so that's something that we would discuss with the regulator in Latvia as well like saying hey let these guys try out see how they can fit into a legal environment and maybe there's a way how we can actually manage this mm. uh, however for the other companies and, and like big uh, big exchanges let's say Binance and, and etc uh, this will set the ground rules this will protect the customer mm -hmm. in the same time it will enable to those those company who wants it will en enable them to actually uh, work in uh, let's say transparent way and then white sector not being somewhere in the gray area you know but actually be let's say whitelisted and I can imagine they might be some companies who says like no this is not for us or we believe it should be only decentralized and no government involvement whatsoever and we'll operate above that level mm -hmm. that's also possible but uh, there's pretty big interest from the industry as well to be uh, able to find a common ground with regulators. Right, and do you see there being all potential uses for block blockchain technology outside of financial services? Absolutely, absolutely. We have, um, we have uh, smart contracts. We have a great company here called SaltoX, mm -hmm. which enables the uh, cross-country uh, stock option uh, issuing. For example, 
if I'm founder in Latvia and I have you on my team from Denmark, mm -hmm. I can issue so you some stocks, uh, which you can afterwards transfer into shares of the company. And to do this uh, internationally, it usually takes a lot of bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. So using smart contracts, this could become much easier and so on. So smart, smart contracts are based on blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. So very good use case. Another one is uh, all, all things uh, considered NFTs, you know. NFTs are enabling uh, big corporations, for example, uh, one of the most typical uh, later use cases, uh, big corp corporations to more to engage with their customers. Mm -hmm. And we have this great example here, Air Baltic, mm -hmm. the airline company, you know. Uh, you could uh, buy, Bit uh, buy Air Baltic tickets uh, from 2014 already with Bitcoin. And currently they have NFT collection which is tied with your customer loyalty program so if you get their NFT and you fly certain times you get loyalty points and you also got upgraded after 10 flights I guess you got upgraded to a business class Wow so that helps them to actually engage with their customers they have huge customer base but it's not always that easy to engage with them and these new gamified or uh, blockchain enabled uh, or maybe sometimes uh, metaverse enabled uh, uh, opportunities uh, gives another layer for already established companies as well to operate. I, I think if, if we look at some of the use cases for blockchain, uh, there's definitely a lot of excitement because of the simplicity and the, f the lack of friction that, that they, they basically entail. Um, I think one concern that that I have and other people share probably as well is the fact that for blockchain to be beneficial to me, I need to put more and more information about my daily life on a digital system. Um, the insurance use case, for example, you know, if, if I want to have a, a clause that automatically pays out if my flight is delayed, that means that the insurance company needs to know that I am flying at this time on this flight. So, is there? Do you see a downside on, on, on us as individuals having to put more and more information of our daily lives on a, on a digital platform? And then, if so, uh, what do you think we can do to remedy that? Yes, I guess uh, there are really different ways how to look at this. Uh, so. I know that some people are much more privacy uh, savvy uh, than, than maybe I am. Uh, I believe that, of course, there are some privacy that needs to be really stayed at your, uh, to yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you are in your house, so it should be your house. You should be able to do there whatever you want without anyone uh, actually listening in or, or watching you or whatever. So, and we have been struggling with this uh, in cases of Amazon Alexa or something like this, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when traveling, I believe anyways, that information is already about that, like to the companies, mm -hmm. to the Googles that put, put that information in your calendars, to the uh, airline companies, which sometimes maybe sell your data to, to other parties. Mm -hmm. uh, so in these cases, this would be actually beneficial. I mean, um, there's a, there's, a, there's a thin line always in balance between those things, you know, you have to almost look case by case. But at the same time, I can give you another example where it definitely should be beneficial and I'm really looking forward to it. For example, in medicine. Mm -hmm. And the EU is also going to this uh, digital, uh, digital, uh, well, uh, how do you call that? Uh, digital identity, identity yeah. which uh, enables one of the things uh, that could be there is blockchain enabled uh, medical track record medical keeping. Records, yes. So it should be safe because it's blockchain protected. Mm -hmm. It should be there and accessible to you at all the time. For example, I had personal case when I went to United States and stayed there. So uh, having deal with the medical situation and insurance there, mm -hmm. they asked me, okay, uh, send, send us all the uh, medical um, medical cases when when you when where which doctor you have been to what things you have been done to and so on i'm i'm saying like are you serious i live across the world in another place and i've been to several doctors in different times mm -hmm. asking me to now like go back and then <laughs> collect all that <laughs> yes. data and so on and and here imagine like you have safely stored blockchain enabled 
maybe with, in your uh, cold wallet or something like that, uh, even stored uh, your medical data. In actual emergencies like this, it would be really helpful. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, now, uh, tell me a little bit, what is Latvia's um, plan in terms of uh, developing blockchain internally and, and perhaps becoming uh, using blockchain as one of their competitive its, its competitive advantages. Uh, so the plan is first of all uh, be really open in terms of uh, legislation. Mm -hmm. So of course we will adopt Mika. We hope we might be one of the first ones to adopt, adopt it and adopt it straightforward into our legislation. Maybe not even thinking and uh, go, going all the required time for re-adoption and so on. Once we have the final text of Mika, mm -hmm. you can actually implement that in local legislation earlier mm -hmm. and say be open to finances of the world, uh, you know, other large players. Say like you already can get the full license here as the same process we will have in France after two years mm -hmm. and you, you have a license to operate in, in the EU, of course you have to be compliant, you need to protect your customers, mm -hmm. but uh, there you go. That's one. There are other uh, several things that needs to we are considering, uh, for example, enabling uh, some tax payments with crypto. Mm -hmm. We are considering enabling um, paying the uh, base of uh, when you establish a company, so paying the capital, uh, the starting capital with the crypto. Mm -hmm. And then I'm imagining like, um, this is broader uh, than probably farther vision, but mm -hmm. imagine we are now say, talking a lot about renewable energy. Yeah. And we are like Latvia is currently building a 200 megawatt, I believe, uh, offshore wind farm uh, mm -hmm. and so on. So very great project. And uh, Denmark is very strong in that technology, right? But the question is, how do you finance huge project like this? And why should we not use finance? Uh, why should we not use blockchain and smart contracts and cryptocurrencies to enable investment from the whole world in order to make that energy project complete? Mm -hmm. Why should we spend only Latvian taxpayer money on that? Yeah, that's a good point. So actually, that technology can help us help us in many different ways. And the only question is how open-minded will be the state institutions in Latvia and how open-minded will be the politicians. But we are working on that. We are talking with them, explaining the advantages there could be. And uh, of course, it's also important to educate the general society. Mm -hmm. So that's also one of the goals of the association is to educate the general society about what blockchain is. There's not, obviously there are those stories about you know, FTX or some scam, and there are those, nobody, nobody denies that. But there are those in, bank, in traditional banking system as well. We had a couple of those here in Latvia, big banks going under because they laundered hundreds of millions of Russian money. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously you will have cases like that, but blockchain is much broader like, than that, right? Yeah. There are much more use cases. So explain it to society tell them what are the use cases and so on. And I see similar trend with the, what we saw uh, with the dot-com bubble mm -hmm. in 2000, right? Uh, at the year 2000, if you, if you ask an average person on the street in Latvia, what is a software company? Their answer would probably be, is that even a real company? Right. What are they selling? <laughs> what is this magical, you know, yeah. uh, digital digital company? Are they actually, is, are they a scam? Is, is that an actual, is there any actual value? Mm. You know, and we have the same discussion now with blockchain. Yeah. So you need to show the use cases, the society, you need to show that actually this will enable them to, uh, in different ways, in different perspectives, like I mentioned, like medical data storage and, and, and things like that safely uh, cross country, cross international uh, money transactions without huge fees. Uh, maybe some, I don't know, like sort of voting rights with tokenization, you know, mm -hmm. and so on, on some small, smaller uh, community related issues. And, and here is not only the political will. Mm -hmm. uh, being a member of the parliament myself for four years, I can say that often it's not the politicians, but the institutions that really are reluctant to new innovations, uh -huh. like state revenue service, or the regulator, or the, uh, I don't know, some, some other institution that is involved in process, you know. Yeah. And they need to really understand, and of course, it's a lot of unknown. It's a new technology, doing things differently. 
and they need to understand how it works. They need to understand how they can manage it, uh, how they can incl include that in their work life. And so it's also uh, also state institution and, and uh, education about these technologies. All right, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Well, uh, Reina, thank you so much for, for your insights. It's uh, really nice meeting you and hearing you talk about this. Likewise, thank you for inviting me. <laughs>